a big hello to all the viewers, all the learners from Dr. Roini Wine. So here, myself, a small introduction I want to give you. I'm from Kasturba Medical College. And I'm an alumni from Manipal Academy of Higher Education. So this is the basic profile I have, and I have some additional qualifications like the medical transcription degree, MBA from um, both these two are from USA, and the MBA in hospital administration it is. And I also have this uh, PhD from Savita University. And uh, there is another degree that is certification course. Actually, it is embryologist certification course. So this is um, ART, that is assisted reproductive technique. Assisted T reproductive technique, you know, um, it trains you in IVF and ICSI procedures. So if you are interested in reproductive medicine and you want to take up something after your PG, you know, whatever stream you have taken, after that you want to Preferably, it has to be anatomy or it has to be something like gynecology. So, this PGs, if you have and if you are interested in reproductive medicine, then you can go with this technique, assisted reproductive technique. So, this is the certification course. It is offered in most of the IVF centers. So, in academies, it is offered. So, you can go get yourself trained in this. Um, and it is really a joy to see, you know, someone else feeling happy and uh, finding some joy in life with the, um, with the, all these issueless couple, when they suddenly find out that they are going to have a baby, it is really the, um, you know, satisfaction is completely different. Okay. Now here I have some 10 years of teaching experience, which I have mentioned that is in India and abroad. So abroad experience actually, you know, gives me a lot of weightage because I'm able to guide many students from these streams, like the NEET PG, FMG, PLAP, USMLE, etc. And I also my, call myself a counselor for uh, PhD students because I do guide PhD students. And you can see that I have the referral codes. I have two referral codes. There is one ROHINI. Okay, there is another one, ROHINI 10. So when you use these referral codes, what is the gain that you get? You get to use these free products that includes the special classes, quizzes, tests, and many things that we upload. Everything will ask you for a referral code. So when you have the referral code handy, and if you know what is the referral code, it becomes very easy for you to access the things. And what do we get as educators? We get a new activated learner. So a new activated learner is added to our credit. So it is mutual. And I would urge everyone to unlock the free plan and start using an academy free products. And this is the referral code or the unlock code. All right, so let's see. Okay, so we have. Uh, okay, so those who have subscribed can only message. So this is one thing to note. Those who have subscribed to an academy, I will be able to see only those messages. The other messages are not shown. So don't be disheartened if your messages are not shown. What you can do is please subscribe first. So when you subscribe, you will start getting those, the, you know, options to message. So you will be able to message, ask a question or anything for that matter. You will be able to interact more. So please subscribe to an academy, Neat PG. Okay, next one here we have the profile. This is how my profile looks. So if you don't know uh, how to go to the profile, you need to download the learners app first and then from there, you go to the NEET PG section. From there, you can see many educators. You type in the name. You can also check with this username. So when you use this username, you will be able to find my profile. Okay. So you have Rohini Wyan here and you can see with the picture it is. And you also see all those credentials that I have written about myself. Read up and also please follow me. I do have a lot of followers, but I need you 
uh, to be following me because I want the learners to follow my classes in not just YouTube but also in special classes because these special classes are really special in a very different way. I'll tell you how it is in the upcoming slides. Okay, so this is the proof because I have a lot of students who have dedicated the hats and these hats are something that they have earned that is with their 100 minutes of dedicated time or 50 minutes like that so on there is orange hat yellow hat and white hat all this is given so all this is, is given so you you can see that they also have the messages there so that means they have the personalized message to give it to their educator so this is motivating not just for the student but also for the educator to do better right so this is a Nice way of acknowledging the interaction. All right. So let's start with the topic. Now, the first question here we have is, the, okay. the first question here is, your 17-year-old neighbor. Okay, just imagine now the situation. So all these are scenario-based, remember? So you have a scenario and you need to imagine. All your imagination counts here. And also the key words that you need to pick, you have to be ready for that. 17-year-old neighbor comes over on a Saturday morning, complaining of rib pain. Okay. So after what happened? After he had a football game and uh, probably uh, he was hit there or he fell, something must have happened. And if chest x-rays indicate rib fracture, that means he must have got hurt. He must have fallen during the game. Where is the rib most likely to be broken? So now rib fracture, you know the rib has a curvature, right? It has the curvature and it forms a joint with the sternum. And also at the back, it forms a joint with the vertebrae. So it has a curvature and that forms the anterolateral aspect is more curved. So you just keep that in mind. Where do you think will be the broken side? Now, what is your differential diagnosis if chest x-rays reveal nothing and he has a bump right around his sternum? What do you think would be the cause? All right. Now here you can see that the rib is broken here. You can also see there is a uh, rib here broken here. If there is more than two or three, then you would just, you know, call that as flail chest. And just anterior to the angle of the rib, you can see that there is a indention or there is a you know, depression. This is the weakest part, actually. The the part where it curves is the weakest part and if there is a bump around his sternum he may also have dislocated the rib from the attachment of the sternum so that is one thing to be noticed so if there is no bump nothing and if the rib is not popped out because of the dislocation then he may only show pain in the chest so that is what you can see and there is interchondral or sternochondral joint could have been separated the rib from the coastal cartilage. So all this will have the ends that is called coastal cartilages. So that's a piece of cartilage and all these are called primary cartilaginous joints. Okay, so it is made up of just the hyaline cartilage and there is very high chances that, you know, it can also break. All right. And it can also undergo calcification. So remember that calcification also can happen at this point. So next one. This question is a 24-year-old female. Okay, he, she comes to the ER emergency room after a car accident. So there was a car accident and she's complaining of chest pain pain and dyspnea okay so there is dyspnea and chest pain so what do you think could have happened here after you expose the chest you notice that a segment of her chest that moves inward on inspiration 
and outward on expiration. A segment has been moving inward and outward. So what do you think? There is a segment. So see if the segment can be formed, if there is a big, you know, chunk of, or the big segment or the big area of the chest is involved. So what is causing this paradoxical movement of our chest while breathing? So what do you think has happened? So of course, there should be something that is, you know, uh, gone wrong. So let's see what it is. So now here we call this as flyal chest. So you can see the picture where the ribs are involved. You can see the segment, flyal segment. You can see there are at least, you know, three ribs have been broken and the segment goes inward with inspiration. And it also, you can see outward when the cavity has a positive pressure, it is popped outward, that is expiration. So you can see it moves with the inspiration and expiration. So let's see what is the muscle that is involved in inspiration. What is the muscle that brings about inspiration and what brings about expiration to add more uh, color to this kind of questions? Anybody? Anyone? Any idea? Which one? Hey, um, Nikhil and Murli, good evening. So you have subscribed. That's the reason you are able to send in the messages. But those who haven't subscribed to an academy, they will not be able to send the messages. So I would suggest you to please subscribe so that we can interact more. Okay, so we have inspiration and expiration. Inspiration is by which one? External intercostal. Yes, external intercostal. And expiration is by internal intercostal. And what do you think the diaphragm does? And what do you think the rectus does? What do you think the rectus would do? Anybody? Inspiration is by diaphragm. Yes. And rectus helps in expiration. So our students have been, you know, preparing for this so well that it is really nice to see um, everyone answering it, you know, like this, in a jiffy. So that is flyal chest. So you can see the picture and please remember the scenario. Okay, next one. Here we have a 68-year-old male, okay, he has severe COPD. He has developed cancer in his left side lung, okay. There is development of cancer on the left side of the lung. So, he has severe COPD and cancer. These are the two key things that we need to remember. What does the image reveal? Image reveals that the cancer spread in the lingular lobe because lingular lobe is the one which is on the left side. Left, left side has the small flap-like thing that is called lingula. So that actually covers the apex of the heart. So that is the lingular lobe of the left lung which must be cut out. How do you gain access to the lung through the thoracic wall? What should you be careful about? And what do you think you should be, you know, cutting through? How do you gain access through the thoracic wall? So, because the cancer is identified, image reveals that in the lingular lobe. So, it has to be removed. And how do you gain access? That is the question. Anyone? So, this is the procedure. We all know thoracic thoracotomy and you make an edge-shaped incision. And that is, you know, um, using this periosteum. So periosteum is the one which can regenerate, right? Periosteum of the rib is the outer covering of the rib that can regenerate. So you want to make incision through the periosteum so that it can regrow, the regrowth of the rib is possible. And you also <clears throat> want to preserve the intercostal muscles because you don't want to damage them and cause damage to the because they are the muscles of respiration. You don't want to damage the muscles. That's the reason you want to involve the 
periosteum of the rib. So you can see that you will pull out the periosteum and go through the periosteal sheath into the thoracic cavity. So you can see all this procedure. You can see the intercostal muscle. You can see the ribs. What are the contents of the intercostal space? Anybody knows? Intercostal space. Where is this intercostal space first of all and where is the muscle? Now we have three sets of muscles. We have external intercostal, internal intercostal and also the innermost. Okay, innermost intercostals. So the space what we are talking about is here. So this is the space between the second and the third set of muscles. So it is van. Yes, it's most of the time it is vein, artery and the nerve. So intercostal veins, arteries and the nerves. So there are intercostal nerves. How many are there anteriorly? How many are there posteriorly? How many anterior intercostals? How many posterior intercostal? Anyone has an idea? Intercostal nerves. Intercostal nerves. Yes, you are right. Nikhil, you are right. The first intercostal has only NAV. So, nerve artery vein. It is not VAN. It is NAV in the first space. Now, here I am asking about the anterior. How many are there? Posterior, how many are there? Remember, the anterior one. How many are the true ribs? Only those many will be there. How many are true ribs you have? One, two, seven. Okay. So then you have the posterior one. All of them are attached to the vertebrae at the back. So you have 11 intercostal nerves at the posterior aspect. So remember, anterior, there are seven of them. And posterior, there are 11 of them. Okay, that is the count of the nerves, intercostal nerves. So now here we have external intercostal, internal intercostal and innermost intercostal. The space is between the second and the third set of muscles. Now what is the direction of external? External is in this direction from, you know, it is like as if you are putting your hands into your pockets. It is downwards and medially. It is directed downwards and medially. So this is the direction downwards and medially. So you remember the direction of external intercostal which is very very important. So you put your hands into the pocket just like your yo-yo honey thing. Okay that yo-yo style. So that is one style. For external intercostals. All right. Internal intercostal is just opposite. So the attachment of internal and innermost is different. All the three are different. Okay. Innermost intercostal has got many origin and insertions because it is straight like this. But inner internal intercostal is opposite to this one. It is in the opposite direction. It is from the crest. Okay. So sorry, it is not from the crest, it is from the lower portions. And goes in the opposite direction. All right, let's move to the next one. Yes, Nikhil. Next question. Please read the question. A 77 year old male. So this is 77 year old male. Came to the emergency room with the chest pain. So most of the things today I have picked is something to do with the thoracic region. Okay. So every day we will do different, different regions so that your thinking stays on one thing. Okay, let's not just, you know, mix it up today because it's a scenario based question. I want you to concentrate more on one particular region. That's why. So here 77 year old male came to emergency room with a chest pain. Thoracic radiographs only reveal calcification. Do you remember I told you about those calcification of the coastal cartilages? 
So on the rib that is from 5th to 10th. Is this normal? Does it happen? Why does it happen? It is normal, but why do you think it happens? Coastal cartilage calcification. But you will not believe that I was down with the, you know, corona. And after I took a chest x-ray, just to see, you know, the status of the lungs, I could see some calcifications here and there. So I was also worried. So calcification does happen, but it happens with age, right? So as we advance in our age, the calcification also happens with the ribs. But in my case, it has happened after the corona. So it again, all these cases also is a possibility that we can have calcifications. All right. So here you can identify such x-rays like this. Just ignore this. Ignore this. Okay. This is a female. All right. So now this is the calcified region. You can see the calcifications. There are many actually. So coastal cartilage does calcify with age. Okay, so it can be, yes, it doesn't affect much but because the age is already 77. They would have so many other ailments other than this. So this would be the least, you know, thing to concentrate on. So I don't think they would be doing any very, very much strenuous exercises or they would be doing uh, anything that involves a lot of, you know, um, high energy things. So it will not recover completely but at the same time they can definitely manage with the breathing so that would not be a problem and see the age it is 77 year old that's why you have to always see the uh, gender of the patient and also the age of the patient so you have to read the scenario very clearly you have to see whether it's a pediatric patient or a female or a male all that emphasis you have to give it to the question That is spine. That is the spine. Teardrop things are the spine. Okay. Spine of the vertebrae. The reflection of the spine. Next one. Because the muscle mass is so less, the, the spines are just standing out like, uh, you know, as if it is the thing that is there. There is very prominent spine. Yes. Okay, next question. While doing rounds, you visit a bedridden patient, okay, in the hospital. She has a history of metastatic breast cancer and has recently experienced newborn pain. So remember, it, they're talking about the breast cancer and they are talking about the newborn pain. If you can't flip her, she is bedridden, remember, you can't flip her. Usually, where do we take the biopsy? Where do we take the biopsy? Biopsy is done. Where? Sternum. Is the sternum of choice always? I would just go with the iliac crest, right? Iliac crest. So now here the patient cannot be flipped. So now the question is, now why not the iliac crest? Because she is bedridden. Otherwise, it would have been the iliac crest because this is more safer, right? You are not good and this is more safer and the scar is also hidden. So that's why there is a very small scar that, that you know, remains, but it is hidden and this is more safer and it is the choice. But... If the person is bedridden, what can you do? You would go with a sternum biopsy. All right. So now here, let's see what is 
what is the aspiration actually you can also think of the aspiration versus the biopsy so what do you think is aspiration and what do you think is the biopsy now here we have uh, Here, the bone marrow is is aspired, right? It is aspired, so using a needle and bone marrow biopsy actually, it uses the needle and to take out small amount of bone tissue. So here it is not the fluid, it is the bone tissue that is removed. So that is the difference between the two. And let's see what uh, procedure is done here. You can see here, this passes through the skin. Then you can see the bone and then the marrow. So that is the iliac crest. And this is how the sternum biopsy is done. Okay, this is the iliac crest. All right. So these are some of the parameters that we can, you know, keep in mind. Which is the site? So these are some of the sites of choice for bone marrow uh, aspiration, and these are some of for the biopsy. So the choice is the iliac spine. Okay, and this is also the first choice. But if that is not, you know, possible, then sternum also could be the choice for biopsy. Now, information, what do you obtain? You obtain the morphology of the cells, then staining is done and culture is done and also immunophenotyping. Genotype, phenotype, you know that. That is morphology of those cells is, you know, in, in, interpreted. And here you can see the fibrosis, focal lesions, bone structure, all that could be taken into consideration. So here what needle is used is given and what studies we do. And also, what is the time for reporting? It is just given on the same day and up to seven days the biopsy report would take. So, all these are some of the small, small things. Now, here, what are the main indications? That is very important because here, unexplained cytopenia, decreased in the number of cells, then suspected hematological malignancy. So, that is one thing. That is the reason. We do the aspiration. So here repeated dry tap is done, aplastic anemia, myelofibrosis, focal lesions are checked, hairy cell leukemia, staging of lymphoma, all that could be indicated in the report. All right, next one. So more on this will be done in oncology classes. Now, here we have two patients come to see you in the same day. One is with outward protruding chest and another one with the inward protruding. What is this called actually? Outward protruding and inward protruding. What do you call that? And malformations in the development of what bone causes these deformities. It's very simple, but sometimes we can just go wrong with it. Anyone answering this? Anyone answering this? Yes, it is. Okay, so now here we have the explanation. There is, there is pectus excavatum and pectus carnivatum. So you can see here, it involves so many bones. It involves not just the ribs, it also involves all those other long bones and it also involves the cartilages. So it is a defect in all these things. So let's see more on this. So pectus excavatum and pex, pectus carnivatum uh, car, uh, carinatum are both caused by the malformations in the 
fusion of the right and left side of the sternum. You can see the sternum is actually, you know, it is developed from the two halves. There is a right and left half and there is failure of the fusion in the center can result in such a conditions. So now there is another condition. What is the name of that condition called? So you have, um, see, we have so many other things that we can list. We can list the cervical topicarditis, Thoraco, abdominal, ectopia cordis, that could be the complication or it could be cleft sternum. So these are some of the abnormalities of the sternum. Okay, these are some of the abnormalities of the sternum. So here you can see, there is again here also, you can see that there is a malformation in the long bones. Okay, this is one classic picture here, you can see. All right, next one. One of your patient has been battling lung cancer. When doing your physical examination, you note that he inhales the right side of his diaphragm when he inhales, the right side of his diaphragm elevates, okay? And when he exhales, the right side depresses. So what has happened? He also complains that his voice is hoarse. Now you must remember, what is the supply of the diaphragm? What is the supply of diaphragm? Step one. So there could be paralysis, right? There could be paralysis of the diaphragm. So you have to keep in mind the supply of the diaphragm is from the phrenic now. And hoarseness is caused because of which one? Hoarseness is caused because of the nerve that supplies the larynx. Nerve to larynx is which one? is the vagus, one of the branch of vagus. So let's see. So let's see what is your answer. Yeah, diaphragm paralysis, yes. And then C3, C4, C5. C3, C4, C5 is the root value of the phrenic. You're right. Okay, now the vagus has branches. One is the superior laryngeal nerve and another one is the recurrent laryngeal nerve. The superior laryngeal nerve divides into external and internal. Recurrent. What does it supply? It supplies all the muscles Except cricothyroid. Murli, check your answer again. Check your answer whether you are correct. Is it recurrent laryngeal? Think, is it external laryngeal or recurrent laryngeal? Give it a small think. That's why I started writing here. Now there is cricothyroid which is supplied by external laryngeal. What is the action of cricothyroid? It tension, tenses the vocal cords. So, if the vocal cords are not tensed, what happens to the voice? There is hoarseness in the voice. So, which now now? Murli, you want to change your answer? Which now now? Is it recurrent laryngeal or external laryngeal? Let's see if the answer comes up. The external 
laryngeal. So here this is what is going to result in hoarseness of the voice. So why do you think that is compressed? Now here we are talking about the lung cancer. You know that the lung extends beyond the first rib, right? It extends into the root of the neck. So root of the neck also has the apex of the lung. So apex of lung extends beyond, you know, the first rib. It goes above the first rib and it is covered by a membrane called suprapleural membrane. So this separates actually, this separates all the structures that is outside. You have all your recurrent laryngeal, you have vagus, you have phrenic, everything is separated from the apex of the lung. But if the lung itself is the, you know, turned into a cancerous structure, then there will be swelling in the neck and that could be compressing the structures that are outside the suprapleural membrane. And this acts like a tent-shaped structure. Suprapleural membrane acts like a tent, tent structure and it separates the structures outside and the structure that is inside. So, you please remember, pancos tumor affects which nerve? It is the recurrent laryngeal. Okay, so now here, all these structures, whatever we mentioned, the person has the paralysis of the diaphragm and he also has hoarseness of the voice. All this is because of the swelling in the apex of the lung. Okay, so now, next one. So here you can see. And other symptoms. Now here, let's see the other symptoms. Of course, we have hoarseness of voice. And that is because of the vagus being suppressed. And we also have the other symptoms. Like the weight loss is the first sign to any, you know, uh, oncology case. So now here, we also have hemotysis. That is coughing out of blood. And there is fatigue. There is neck swelling and weakness and also general body weakness and pains. So all this you can list. Next one. 22 year old specialist. Okay, she receives a gunshot wound to the chest. One second. Okay, so now here 22 year old specialist, he receives a gunshot wound to the chest and you determine that he has a you know, inwardly pushed chest, that is sucking chest and we need to place a chest tube. So chest tube is required because there is collection of fluid and because you are a nice doctor, you want to first anesthetize the place or prior to making an incision on the chest for the chest tube. So where do you inject the needle when doing the intercostal nerve block? That is where. And where do you place the chest tube? This is two questions. Where do you think this one is done? Where do you think the other one is done? Okay, Murli says upper border of the rib. Upper border of the rib. Which rib? Which rib you are talking about? 
yeah fine upper border of the rib fine but which rib you are talking about okay so your answer is for chest tube nerve block lower border yes nerve block lower border and for the chest tube it is the border so let's see see this is the on the lateral side of the rib cage uh, placing the needle between external and intercostal muscles where the nerve resides right so you have to block the nerve where is the rib actually so between the ribs where is the intercostal space and where are the vessels they are present in that groove so that is where exactly you have to place the needle for the block for blocking the nerve and when you want to place the chest tube it has to be in the mid axillary line between the fifth and sixth intercostal space okay so there is a you know nice picture we can uh, imagine there is a line here so this is where you are supposed to place there is another line this is exactly where the no nerve intercostal nerve will be present and that is where the needle is this is between the fifth and sixth okay so this is where exactly it is placed this is for the chest tube and this one is for the needle okay so now we have reached the last one this is the last stage from last uh, slide probably let's move on to some other talk let's talk about the special class features now so what do you think how different is special class for you so now you are on youtube all the time and uh, have you watched the special classes have you attended my special classes and how different do you think it is from the youtube you must attend my special classes i have a class on wednesday okay so wednesday i have a class and i also have it on thursday both the days at 5 pm i have a revision of complete you know lower limb scenario based questions i think it's the upper limb upper limb scenario based questions so you will have lot of questions and lot of things sorry to come back to this it is the lower limb so all the scenario based questions and i would be clarifying each and everything that you have in mind so any doubts any clarifications come with your list and i'll clarify all your doubts on wednesday and thursday at 5 pm so you yourself can you know um, judge how different your youtube and the special classes are special classes are very interactive when you compare with the youtube classes because here sometimes the messages just get lost okay we don't uh, see the messages or it doesn't appear quickly so but it is not so in the case of special classes i i can see myself in the you know uh, in a corner there is a picture there i can see myself and i can also interact with the students i feel as if i am taking the class for a you know, offline group and i don't feel that it's an online class at all because the interaction will be that good and also we use the polls for all these learners for mcqs and it is going to definitely keep you very interested in the topic and there is also a feature raise a hand where you can raise a hand pause the class ask the question all that can be done and you will never miss a class if it's a special one because here we have to you know invite you through the links but there you don't have to you get a notification prior to the class and you also know what topic is going to be taught so you will know exactly what to expect mm -hmm. so all these lecture notes pdfs are available at the end of the class that can be downloaded so that is that special the special classes are and you can also access it is anywhere and any time so you have your own you know schedule where you can access it over and over again you don't have to search for it you will have a playlist of all the classes provided you have subscribed okay so we have uh, so many people saying thank you but i would be 
you know, expecting you all to attend my special classes. And that is especially there on um, Wednesday and Thursday in full swing because that is a festival day for us for special classes. So would like to see more and more students uh, attending these classes. And see, here are my upcoming classes. So Moodley and um, we have um, Nikhil. All right, please attend. Attend these classes Wednesday, 5 p.m., Thursday, 5 p.m. And I said it is lower limb. That's my upcoming class for this week. And here is by plus subscription. What do you get in plus subscription? You get whole lot of access to live and recorded classes. You have class access to question banks. And also, if you take 12 month subscription, you also get printed notes you can get. And here, iconic subscription, what do you get? You get the an academy plus the prep ladder access. So you get the dual access. And also you have in these two, you have the integrated essentials are there, clinical, integrated, everything. And also video lectures from the dream team is there. And then QBank, rapid revisions, snapshots, and also all these, you know, question notes are there. So all that is available in prep ladder. And an academy, of course, you know what is available. We have been telling about this. Let's see quickly. Neat PG one month package is available. It is starting from 11th to 31st, for instance. For just one, if I take, it is ultra fast, you know, high yield revision batch. So you have three, four days of the revision batch. Then you have then emergency room MCQ session for a few days. And then you have Neat PG test. So everything is going on at the parallel track. So you have so many options. You can prepare yourself really well with these packages. And you also see the batch is starting on 11th of August where focus FMG batch, there is target next 2022. See, all these are the parallel running uh, batches. So you can enroll it to many of them because it is not going to clash with the other classes. They're at a different time. And some batches are of three hours and some batches will cover 19 subjects. And you can also see the grant test is available and dates are given ahead of time. So there is absolutely no confusion in the timetable nor the curriculum. You can see the one month package here and you can also see there is a Med Genius Leadership the scholarship test where you can answer 50 questions and all NEET PG aspirants can answer this and it is on 14th of August at 8 p.m. Okay, it's a one hour test where Focus FMG batch target next 2022 and NEET PG test and analysis, all these, you know, starting. So ultra fast track, high yield topic revisions up available. So all this is started on 4th of August and many, many subjects like 19 subjects for NEET PG 2021 is, you know, on the list. You also have this uh, four-year subscription which has been introduced where INR 60,000 is for plus subscription and 75 is for iconic. So you can go with the iconic or the plus subscription and all the four years you can prepare yourself so well for your eat PG. So you can start early when you are in UG itself and aim high till your PG. So this is launching two month subscription 6750 is the introductory offer and there is limited time offer for everything right so you have a price slash also of 10 percent and you can get this discount when you use the code so use the code get the discount you can see from 92 to it is 58 500 only and you can also see there is a price hike that has happened so you don't want all the prices to be hiked before your, you take up the decision to subscribe. So go ahead and see the price list and hurry up. And you can also see there is new feature that has been added to those plus subscription plus classes. 
this is really beautiful where the interaction is even more better and this is last mile to neat pg 21 where i teach anatomy similarly there are various 19 other you know people who are educators who are going to handle other subjects and integrated clinical batch where the surgery, medicine, pediatrics, OBG, all these are available with the top educators and they have been given so many awards to cover these topics. And there is Focus FMGE with 650 awards and also there is an EMI option in case you want to take up EMI and pay your, you know, fees, subscription fees in a monthly manner. So all this is for you and this is a big thank you from my side for being very good listeners and this is what I urge you please subscribe like and share and also follow my profile I'm going to have a lot of MCQs lot of scenario based questions and all of them are going to be interesting all that is going to be there in the bucket okay so follow me to know more and this is my referral code for all your subscriptions. So go ahead, get your 10% discounts today itself. Okay. Thank you so much for watching.